The Viathon Lab recently presented a work-in-progress production of Learning How to Read by Moonlight. I served as guest narrator, and after the show, had a chance to sit down with the playwright. Welcome to this special edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Today, I have a very special guest. He's going to tell us all about his new play. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi. It's playwright Gavin Dahaitreda, and my new play is called Learning How to Read by Moonlight. I had the special opportunity to be one of the guest narrators tonight. My play is a community play, and at this time as we're coming back from the shutdown into theater, for me, I just want to bring folks in to remember that there is hope in the world, despite all of the heartache. I write, everything I write is based on the, uh, the inquiry of whether love exists in a world of cruelty. And I continuously, thank God so far, I, I, I have proven to myself at varying degrees that love does exist. And for me, this particular play about this kid and their family searching for sanctuary during the times of Duterte and Trump reminds me that there is hope in the world, there is love in the world, and there are people out there who are strangers who will share you that love with you. So. Learning how to read by moonlight. Let's gather around like our families used to do. We've got a tale about a kid who finds his truth. arrested for drug possession. On what evidence? You are going to rot in jail. Where are your papers? No papers. Of course not. Tapos, narealize ko kung paano akong tingnan ng iba. Wala akong kamalay-malay. Ganito ba ang tingin sa akin ng mga tao? The natives murdered Alina, the giant sea turtle, ruthlessly. Hey, Dad! I feel so alone! I'm not a bad boy! Why do bad things happen to me? Why do bad things... My heart always hurts! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! I'm so, so sorry! I'm sorry! It's alright! It's alright! It's alright! Remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? Remember the gift that we talked about? How you would get it when you absolutely needed it? Yeah. 
2019, a long time in the before time, and it was one of the fastest plays I had ever written. The image of, of just an angry six-year-old boy came to my mind, and as a public school teacher, it was something I was familiar with, and the first scene I wrote was just the six-year-old boy coming into his home and his imaginary friend, which I just came out of nowhere from this exercise, started talking to him on how to process his feelings. And as I continued writing, I was sending these scenes to Sergio uh, Moritz Ang, who is our actor who played Eddie, the lead role. And we start talking about our own Im family's immigration stories. And through this, um, we wanted to look back on how much we had grown. And the only way to do that is to go back to our six-year-old selves. Now, what I found really fascinating about the experience is the puppetry. Can we talk about the puppetry? Oh yeah, I am a sucker for puppets. I love puppets. Um, I'm a boy of the East Village, born and raised, and so going to La Mama or like just seeing puppets on the street was something that was meaningful to me. And puppets always bring magic to the theater. I think as adults we learned that magic doesn't exist, and I said, no, it does exist. And so I had to specifically write down puppets in the show. Now this was part of a workshop process and a grant. Can we talk about that? <laughs> Yeah, the Episcopal Actors Guild is a wonderful organization, a nonprofit that has uh, that provides services free to artists across uh, across the city. And we they like free. Yeah, free. <laughs> well, they, they existed for the past hundred years as a food bank for actors. They help uh, with financial aid. They help uh, find uh, health care for them. And you do not need to be Episcopalian. It's something that they do for the community. And every year, um, they provide grants for works that are in progress that need us a space to do their work and so through this grant we were able to set up a fine rehearsal space they gave us rehearsal space as well as the venue to perform it when i i was born here but then my parents uh, brought me to the philippines and i lived there for the first three years of my life and so when i came in the only language i spoke was tagalog and According to, according to my mom, she was told by the school not to speak to me in Tagalog so that I would just learn English because all I did at home was speak Tagalog. And so even when the first days of school, my mom said we didn't understand what they were saying. And so for me, as growing up, it became less and less part of my life until my parents realized I still understood it. Then they started to speak to me again um, in Tagalog and also in another dialect uh, called Anongo. Um, and so, my, my Tagalog isn't great, I've never been taught to formally write it, so this was the first time that I sat down with my parents and said, we're going to go through this process together, and it was really moving. Uh, a lot of the things that my father and I worked on late at night just to talk to them, they're not theater people, and for them to know that something was going to be spoken in their language was very moving, and so it was a family experience. I wouldn't give that up for anything. It was, your audience was very diverse. Your audience was completely with you throughout. It was very interesting for me to be sitting next to the playwright <laughs> and have you laughing. <laughs> Every, I, You're, you wore so many hats today. Um, now, how did you come up with the special conceit of having a different narrator every night? Ooh, um, that was from the very first draft. And an idea stuck to it. It comes from my father. So he grew up not having the money to buy books. He also came from a similar uh, town that's that's mentioned in, in the play in the provinces of the Philippines, in South Cotabato. And his dream was to have his own library. And so when I was growing up, it meant to it meant a lot to him to read to me every night. And so and then our our little trips during the day, our bonding was to bring me to Strand. And at Strand, I still remember before the renovations, the children's section is downstairs, no air conditioning. I'll be there sweating, reading books. And that was my gift my father gave me to read. And so I felt strongly that this play had to be read to a community by someone that they care about, they love it. And it's it's the conceit that uh, you know that adults can read to others to share that love is an act of love. I just had to do it. It's just meaningful to me.